Hello everyone, I'm Sophie and I'm currently at Kachara Forest Retreat, Bentong, Malaysia. And I'll still continue, I'll be continuing in sharing from my book, from this book by my Guru, His Eminence, the 25th, Sam Tukurin Pushi. This is Gurus for Hire, Enlightenment for Sale. An insider's guide into the relationship between spiritual teachers, students and centers. And uh, I'll be reading from page 60. Outer Protocol, the 50 verses on Guru Devotion. And as usual, I will go to a picture to share with you before I start. There you go. This is my Guru, His Eminence, the 25th, Sam Toko Rinpoche, with a couple of students. And you can see how the Guru is teaching well, a new student at that time. You know, um, okay, now let's see. Page 60, Outer protocol, protocol, the 50 verses on Guru Devotion. Verse 48 of the 50 verses on Guru Devotion by Ashwagosha states, after a disciple has taken refuge in the Triple Gem and developed a pure enlightened motive, he should be given this text to take to his heart how to abandon his own arrogant self-will and follow in his Guru's footsteps along the greater path to enlightenment. In this day and age, when we give this text to people in countries without Buddhist mass consciousness, they will reject it even after they have taken refuge, run away or find it fanatical. They may not accept it because they do not know the real causes for refuge and how to act after refuge, after taking refuge. However, the reason we follow this text is stated very clearly. It is to let go of our own arrogance. Although the verses seem to be restrictive and tell us that we cannot do a lot of things, the basic purpose of the whole text is to let go of arrogance. The whole point of being polite in front of, the, of a guru, such as to stand up for the guru or to serve and help the guru, is to hone and refine our outer actions to be polite with everybody. How we sit or act and how alert we are is very important. A person's outer actions reflects his inner mind. If we can control ourselves internally, then controlling our external behavior becomes very easy. When we attend Dharma talks, according to the 50 verses on Guru devotion, we are not supposed to twist our bodies, crack our knuckles, stretch or point our feet to the Guru, play with our nails, look around, fall asleep and move about to get comfortable. It shows our flippancy. If we are not even at a level where we can control our outer bodies, how can we control our inner bodies or our mind? If we cannot even control our feet, fingers or spine, how are we going to meditate? If we cannot even control this body, and we go around telling people we are spiritually advanced, we will look ridiculous. When His Holiness Kabje Zong Rinpoche gave teachings in Los Angeles, I watched my old Geshe, who was Zong Rinpoche's student, sitting right in front of the room fully aware, with his eyes half open, not looking left or right, never moving. He sat through 8 to 10 hours of teachings like this, Every day, if Kabje Zong Rinpoche said something funny, he would cover his mouth and laugh, just like a geisha. Now I know why people say he has good manners and why he is so advanced in his tantric practice. It is because he can control everything. I have seen my great masters and how they act with their guru. They are like a newly wed bride, as it says we should be in the 50 stanzas, 50 verses. When they speak, they talk pleasantly and in such a way that their voice is clear. 
If their teacher shows any difficulty in hearing, then they speak louder. They are humble. They always smile. They are always pleasant, and they make sure they pronounce their words well. They never make their guru suffer by having to ask them to repeat what they say. If during a dharma talk we cannot be alert or polite, we cannot concentrate or focus. Even if the guru makes a lot of jokes to keep us awake, the air conditioner is on, and everything is provided. Then, what kind of spiritual pioneer or spiritual devotee are we? Having said that, in a country that does not have this type of mass consciousness, respect comes in different ways. For example, students make, may make the effort to change their schedule or move their personal attachments around in order to attend the teachings. That is respect. Here, if you do not sit on the floor with your feet in a yogic position, it does not mean you do not have respect. It means your body is not able to or not used to it. It is not about whether prostrating to our gurus is guru devotion. Whether or not we prostrate is not guru devotion. Those things are cultural. Some people in other countries just bow. That is equivalent to a full Tibetan prostration. Guru devotion is not a fanatical practice which makes us do things that we physically could, cannot do. It is about the attitude of the mind. It is okay if we have not been sitting through hours of teachings with your back bent and hands folded for the last 40 years. If instead you sit on a chair comfortably, you are alert and do not fall asleep, that is very good. But to crack, your, to crack our knuckles, twist our bodies around, pick our noses, talk to our neighbours, or fall asleep is rude across all cultures. Those are basic human manners that we need to be aware of. Verse 45 says, If because of sickness you are physically unable to bow to your guru and must do what normally would be prohibited, even without his explicit permission, there will be no unfortunate consequences if you have a virtuous mind. There is no bad karma if we do something wrong when we are sick, not able to do something, do not know the protocol, or if it is not in our culture. These verses are not fanatical. The most important thing is that our mind remains virtuous. What the 50 verses on Guru devotion does is to use our physical, outer body to train our awareness. When it trains our awareness, it also trains us to be well-mannered. If we are mannered, alert and awake, we can dress and talk well. We'll be able to bring others to the Dharma. People watch our devotion and interaction with the Guru. How we interact with and react to the Guru can be regarded as Tenzin, holder of the Dharma, or Tenshi, destroyer of the Dharma. Our bad, ac bad actions and rudeness can destroy the Dharma among people around us because they will see that although we have been around the Guru for years, we are still behaving badly. They will immediately think that the Guru is ineffective. If we want to talk about our Guru to anybody in the centre, it begins with our physical manners. That is the first sign of whether we really have conviction in our spiritual practice. You might ask what that has to do with inner meditation. Everything and nothing. It is everything because if we are controlled within, then to control our behaviour on the outside is very easy. We are taught not to argue with our gurus and not to argue with others near his presence. We do not disturb our guru's mind with our delusions. This is because he is here. Sorry. This is because he is there is to control our delusion. So, if we are practicing delusion next to him, what is the point of being near him? When he is with us or around us, we should control ourselves to the best of our ability and not argue, fight 
or engage in negative actions around him. We do all this in our Guru's presence to train our mind to be aware, to be alert. It is training for us. We learn to do it twice, sorry, once, twice, thrice. We become accustomed to it and we can then apply it to any situation. Dharma practitioners of the highest order are very polite, very mannered and groomed. Their body, their speech and their mind are used to hook people to the Dharma. Everything about their countenance evokes wondrous admiration in others, so that they ask, what are you about? What is your history? They talk to them and they, be, they come to the Dharma. All that is for development and all that is for compassion. These are things that senior students should be able to teach others. Senior students should be able to take care of the new ones and the ones who always slip. Senior students should not just blindly ignore bad behaviours by other students, not do anything, say that they, are tr they tried and leave it. Senior students should take the responsibility for this and not leave it for the Guru to correct other students. If we do that, we bring the Guru down to the level of a disciplinary or a parent. As it, as it says in verse 44, Be diligent in all your actions, alert and mindful never to forget your word of honour. If fellow disciples transgress what is proper in their behaviour, correct each other in a friendly manner. When I lived with Kenso Jampa Yeshi Rinpoche, I took control of handling all the students' discipline. I would never bring it to Rinpoche because that would have been a distraction to take my guru away from his real purpose of teaching. When other students and other disciples do not do what they are supposed to do, it is our responsibility as the guru's disciple to let them know. If senior students keep quiet about other students who are always errant and full of mistakes, they allow this behaviour to continue or they let someone else talk about it. It is a clear reflection of the senior student's lack of guru devotion, care, compassion and commitment. It becomes another way of expressing that we do not care or that we do not want to look bad or lose face. That is ego. Then, as it says in verse 49, after training in the 50 verses and mastering them, we become a proper vessel of the Dharma. When we become a proper vessel of the Dharma, the Guru may give us empowerments, initiations and the Tantric path. By studying the prerequisite trainings of Guru devotion and the graded path common to both the Sutra and Tantra, you will become a suitable vessel to hold the pure Dharma. You may then be given such teachings as Tantra. A real Guru would not give us empowerments or the Tantric teachings without us first mastering the 50 verses on Guru devotion. These 50 verses train us in our spiritual practice, which is the best and ultimate offering to our Gurus. There are three types of offerings we can make to our Gurus. Offering of material gifts or items, offering of service and offerings of our spiritual practice. The offering of spiritual practice and transformation is the best out of the three and the one that our Gurus actually expect and want from us. If we have taken refuge in our Guru, we should decrease hateful, bad states of mind, delusions and we should offer that up to our Guru. If we have recited the Heart Sutra one million times or if we have gotten rid of or lessened our anger, we should offer that up to our Guru. The Guru wants our practice. If we just offered material things, we will still get merits and positive potential and we will still make a connection with the Buddha. However, Making material offerings is not actually the purpose of Guru devotion. Reciting and meditating on the 50 verses on Guru devotion is not a torturous act. It is not to brainwash or torture us, or to make us follow a Guru mindlessly. It is to remind us of the correct conduct, 
towards a being who teaches us enlightenment and who is enlightened or represents the state of enlightenment that we wish to achieve. The proper conduct towards the Guru is not fanatical. It is based on logic and on our physical and mental capabilities. The Guru is the greatest training ground for us to destroy our delusions, illusions, hatred, anger, and all the ten non-virtuous acts that we have engaged in since we were born, from our previous lives until now. Our Guru is the greatest training ground for us to become enlightened beings. If we can practice all the qualities that are mentioned in the 50 verses with our Guru, we'll be able to practice all this with all sentient beings. And finally, when we are able to practice this, practice this with all sentient beings without any feeling, hurt, attachment or detachment, then we will have realized emptiness and gain compassion. Our Guru is our battleground. The best thing about this is that he does not expect anything from us except our Dharma practice. Anything we do in relation, in relation to him, offering food, material items or service, or assisting him, is not for him. It is for us. It's quite a long chapter, this one. So I'll end this, uh, uh, share this chapter for now. And we'll close this off, this sharing off with a completion dedication. And I'll be reciting it in Tibetan. And I do apologize that sometimes my pronunciation is off. And um, I do hope that you're able to pronounce it better than me when you when you see it's in front of you. Jang Jub Sen Jorin Poshi, Maki Panam Gishi, Kepanam Pami Payang, Goni Gonu Pewashu, Tony Toarin Poshi, Maki Panam Gishi, Kepanam Pami Payang, Goni Gonu Pewashu. Tasa jini sapangi wadi, tandan droa guna kapadang, jipa jesu no santrapai, tambingi porin dosa se sho, kewa kuntu yandala madang, drami choki pala no choching, sadam nangi yote razone, doji changi no panga tusso, kewa di yududa lama sangi droyone, droa chikia malupa, di sala go pasho, choki gang posunga pa, chosu nampa pewala, geki sama si wadang, tunki malu sawa sho, Dadam sangi desendan, drewa songi latini, gewa lo santrapai, tampa yuriva gyushi. Ni modele sendele, ni mingunyan dele shi, ni sintato dele pa, kuncho songi jingilo, kuncho songi ngodruso, kuncho songi trasi sho. Jesu lama kusen rapting ching, nam katrini chochu ke pada, lo sam tempe drome sap songi, droe mun satato ni gyushi. Gang we rao we ko we shing kam den, pen dan den wa ma lu gyo we ne, chan ren zik wan ten zik get so yi, sha pe shi de pa du ten gyo shi. Hum, tong pe ngot ru ma lu pa, den de da la sao du so, ko dan den pa long chot na, ke pa su shik shuk ten sao. As you can see, the Tibetan prayer, there's a prayer in English as well, and it it does not make a lot of difference if you recite it in English if it's um, if you are more comfortable with it. So as it says, you know, we usually would um, do this dedication as a conclusion, you know, of any meritorious activities, and um, that we will dedicate these merits, you know, that we accumulate for the benefit of all sentient beings. And thank you again for sharing your time with me. And I do hope that you will join me again for my next session.